fellow Amazonians. This liberation journey that we embarked on seven years ago is a journey of no return. We started this journey knowing we might not all get to our destination, but we will get there as a nation. Many will fall by the wayside out of choice, and many may have changed their destination midway through. Some have paid the ultimate price for our liberation quest because of this genocide on our people perpetrated by Yaoundé, headed by the nonagenarian dictator Paul Beer. However it may be, our train must get the Abed Mukon Square and Njoli Tumbe Boulevard and arrive at the Endeli Foncha and Jua monuments towering in front of the State House. What a day that will be. What a big ending that will be. What rivers of joy that will flow. And what a memory that will be for generations. Our homes and streets and roads will be decorated with the beautiful words, free at last. The price we pay today to take back our country will be nothing compared to the joy on that day. Let's remember our innocent women and children slaughtered by the Republic of Cameroon, our sick and elderly ones roasted over the years by French Cameroon criminals in uniform, while in their homes and especially our heroes, the valiant Ambassador Restoration Forces, who gave their precious lives to purchase our freedom. I'm thinking of our fallen heroes and heroines who have gone before us. A moment of silence, please. May their blood continue to fuel our determination to fight on for a free and independent Amazonia. Exactly 62 years ago, on the 30th of September and the 1st of October 1961, the world, in a twist of fate, conspired to subject our destiny as a people to perpetual colonization. Contrary to their own United Nations statutes, they transitioned the southern Cameroons a vibrant self-governing people from self-governance down the valley of a cruel annexation and from a vibrant democracy to a barbarous autocracy, from nonchalant British masters to a cruel French colonial proxy, La Republic du Cameroon. The world body, the United Nations, denied us the right to enjoy our full independence. Britain gave a flimsy excuse at the floor of the United Nations that we were too small and poor to stand alone. They violated the United Nations trusteeship agreement that commissioned them to prepare us for independence or self-government. Lots were cast between Paris and London over our destiny. Britain decided to sell us to the more ruthless French masters for the price of a gift. The United Nations condoned this maneuver, ignored our true wishes and our protests, hushed our voices and shut their doors to the real demands of our founding fathers, which was total independence. They pushed us into this avoidable catastrophe. The West feared the spread of an ideology, communism at the time, more than the reality of a future bloodbath from that injustice. We left from being a German colony to a League of Nations colony, from a League of Nations colony to a semi-British colony under the United Nations trusteeship system, from a semi-British colony under the United Nations system into the hands of the iron fisted France Afrique to be supervised by the, by the French proxy, La Republique du Cameroon. Most of our leaders, it should be recalled, 
rejected the option of independence by joining, dictated to us by the victors of the Second World War. They asked for our own independence as was contemplated by the United Nations Trusteeship Agreement. Today, we are the only country in Africa that instead of being decolonized by the United Nations, was handed over to the French. We call on the world body to revisit our case. Why should the phobia of the spread of a communist ideology in Africa in the 1960s be a valid reason today for, to allow the southern Cameroons to be annihilated by the invisible hands of the French? How could the southern Cameroons be considered a micronation today when we are bigger in population than Libya, Congo, Central African Republic, Liberia, Gabon, Gambia, Mauritania, Eritrea, Botswana, Namibia, Equatorial Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, Mauritius, Djibouti, Seychelles, Sao Tome, and Principe, all independent countries. In fact, listen to this, Amazonia is more than Gabon, Namibia, and Botswana combined. Economically speaking, Amazonia potentially has the highest per capita in West Africa, ahead of Ghana and Nigeria, economic experts put Southern Cameroon's Ambazonia per capita at $4,500, being 60% of the GDP of Cameroon, divided by po the population. That's $45 billion divided by 6 million population, diaspora not included. That is twice the per capita of Ghana and more than twice the per capita of Nigeria. Why would the world body conspire with the French to subject 8 million peace-loving sorting Cameroonians to be totally annihilated by the French and their puppets just because of an error they can correct today without bloodshed? They will not even entertain a debate on the conflict in the southern Cameroons on the floor of the United Nations General Assembly. In what ways is the United Nations living up to its commitment to the responsibility to protect in the Southern Cameroons or in Africa in general? Dear stakeholders, the assignment we must accomplish in our generation will not be complete without friends. It is difficult to find friends in the Central Africa region, which is France's number one backyard today in Africa. The CEMAC, as a UN regional body, is a French club that we cannot count on at this time. The anti-France revolt spreading across the South region is now metamorphosing as the spread of Russian influence in the South region. And this puts us once more at the crossroads between the West and the, and the East. The French community of Central Africa is fast becoming the Russian community of Central Africa state. Today, the independence of Southern Cameroons is a better option, though, for the world than our perpetual annexation by La Republic, which is changing the geopolitical dynamics in the Gulf of Guinea by allying with Russia. Since February 2022, the world is now a multipolar world divided into the friends of Ukraine, the friends of Russia, and the non-aligned nations. Everyone is analyzing the changing order and positioning to protect their interests within the new geopolitical order. Yes, we were a casualty during the Cold War era. Today, the southern Cameroons is determined not to fall between the cracks of the geopolitical blocks. Our assignment is twofold. To align our own interests with those of our old friends who stand with us and seek to persuade new ones who will, without prejudice, align their interests with ours and work for the freedom and justice for Amazonia. If we make the mistake of embracing political passion Instead of our interests first, we will miss the opportunities nursed by the changing world order for the liberation of the Southern Cameroons. And dear international community, 
We are choosing to stand with the people of Ukraine, just as we stand with all other annexed people in the world, because annexation is a crime. It was wrong in Ukraine or, or uh, Kuwait, so it is wrong in Ukraine. We do not understand, though, the double standard of some who condemn Putin in Ukraine that would not condemn the genocidal dictator Paul Bia in Amazonia. Those who support Ukraine against Russian occupation that pretentiously allow France to massacre Amazonians through their proxy with impunity. These people are confusing us. France has stood against resolving the conflict in the southern Cameroons through genuine dialogue. They make sure the, the issue is not discussed by the Security Council nor the General Assembly of the United Nations. They also make sure the organization, the, the, the AU, where they wield enormous influence, does not discuss our conflict either. The French hide behind a veto power in the United Nations to commit crimes in Amazonia, hinder all discussions and investigations, write their own verdicts and use their media and lobbyists to impose an information blackout on their atrocity crimes in Amazonia. We are disappointed by this wicked plan of France to forcefully strangle and take over Amazonia. Also, because they want to keep us under La Republique de Cameroon, with whom they signed slave accords in the 1950s, like they did with all former French colonies in Africa. By so doing, they want to continue stealing from Amazonia through their proxy, La Republique de Cameroon. So the war in Amazonia is a French proxy war. We say no to the French hegemony in Amazonia. We are equally disappointed by the passive complicity of Britain, which has remained silent amidst the ongoing genocidal war, pretending as though our problem is one of secession and not about a failed decolonization. Failed why? Failed because they, as the United Nations Trust Administrators of the Southern Cameroons, failed in their assignment to prepare us for self-government or independence. Fellow Amazonians, our people are facing extermination. The ultimate plan of Francis Cameroon is to kill all of us and take control of everything we have and everything we are. The United Nations, in Resolution 1608, paragraph 15, mandated the unification, unification of two different Cameroons. But France changed it to reunification, which is a code word for annexation. The change from annexation to a failed assimilation, then from a failed assimilation to the present-day extermination plan. This year alone, there has been many recorded massacres to prove this point. The Kona massacre, the UB bombings in Boya, the Kono Titi massacre, the Mavas massacre in Akwaya, the Batibo massacre, the Nacho massacre, the Babanki massacres, the Bamenda massacre, and many other massacres couched as the killing of amber fighters. Then the numerous arrests and forceful disappearances of many, um, um, uh, many more innocent people across Amazonia. Since 2016, the Republic of Cameroon has not proposed a single solution that is anywhere close to what we are demanding. They rejected the Swiss process and manipulated the Canadians into a phony mediation process, which they denied afterwards. They have rejected every meaningful initiative by the international community that will result in a negotiated settlement because they don't want a negotiated settlement. All they want is a military solution. If a person goes on a rampage, killing your livestock daily, and he rejects every call to dialogue with you in any shape or form, what do you think his goal is? Of course. The one answer is he wants to exterminate everything you have. Dear ARFs, 
this year, most of you have realigned yourselves under the leadership of your counties and the LGAs and your interim government as it, as it was before the brutal interruption by some diaspora dissidents. You have been able to filter out the toxic manipulations from the diaspora. You trashed the unity warrior, palace warrior phenomenon. And you have also understood that the so-called APLC is a keyboard gang, formerly known as AMF, promoted by some reckless prisoners in the Carnegie prison. They are hoping to gather some of you like commodities and use you as negotiation chips. There is no money to give to fighters, so they endorse kidnapping, extortion, stealing, and terrorizing the population for money. Like their few ADF cousins, the population has vomited them, and they now exist in name only. Bet for the propaganda stunts they do here and there, making bogus announcements, and burning abandoned La Republic du Cameroon checkpoints, or the stealing, outright stealing and labeling of our jobs done by the ARFs. They don't fight the enemy. They are in, in this to steal, to extort, and line their pockets. Our ARFs, you are stronger and more determined today than ever before, as we have seen you announce your presence across the 13 counties with a return of firepower you have eliminated or forced to desert, desert no less than 5,000 La Republic to Cameroon criminals in uniform. Little wonder within the, six, the past six years, La Republic to Cameroon has launched five recruitment campaigns into the Iraq Tak army. Now they cannot even find recruits. The privileged Bulu Beti tribes are scared of Amazonia. And other, other tribes have also realized that the war in Amazonia is not meant to benefit French Cameroons, but to protect the Burubeti hegemony. You, the ARFs, are the true heroes of this story. You are the best examples of how far a determined people can go in pursuit of their freedom, even against the greatest of enemies. When French Cameroon tells the United Nations General Assembly, peace is gradually returning in Amazonia, it is very laughable because they are, they are either in denial or they are suffering from a self-destruction complex. Somebody should remind the zombie genocide in a today that he will be remembered and surely so for collapsing French Cameroon because, because of his senseless war on the people of the southern Cameroon and Bazonia. French Cameroon, under the weight of this war, is officially a failed state engulfed in a mountain of internal and external debts amounting to 85% of its GDP. This quarter alone, July to September 2023, Cameroon has to pay 386.8 billion CFA for debt servicing. La Republic of Cameroon is finished. Here are the characteristics of a failed state we see in French Cameroon today. Number one, the Republic of Cameroon has lost effective control of what it considers its territory. Number two, the political order in La Republic of Cameroon is broken and taken over by tribalism and a tribal mafia. Number three, the huge spike in unsolved murders and arsons is a testament that law enforcement has failed. There is no law in La Republic of Cameroon, and what you see now is called the law of the jungle. <clears throat> Civil society has been caged by fear, and the courts work for the mafia. So there is anarchy now in Cameroon. And number five, development is no longer the agenda of its leaders. The only agenda today is debt servicing, embezzlement, stealing, and looting as much as they can. How can such a country win Ambazonia in this war? Ambazonians, fear not. We are free. Fellow countrymen and women, my heart and prayers go to all our prisoners who woke up today alive in one dungeon or the other of La Republic du Cameroon. 
I weep for able-bodied men and women and children who are now called refugees, having survived through bushes, deserts, seas, and perilous routes. You depend on benevolence today. You have survived rape, childbearing in bushes, hunger, sickness, hate, gunshot wounds, discrimination, homelessness, imprisonment, police brutality, etc., hoping to return one day to a free Amazonia. It is because of you that we must fight with every ounce of our energy. We want to support you in your present plight as much as we can. That there is not a greater gift we can give you than to fight for a free Amazonia we can all return to as soon as possible. I salute you with the, the salutation of hope and courage. Remain law-abiding where you are. Support our warriors if you can. And above all, pray for divine intervention in our matter as we fight on. Patriotic diasporans, I salute all of you gathered around our flag on this national day, our Independence Day, to remind the world of our genocide and the injustice done to us as a nation by France and the complicit international community. Share our story with passion and courage, knowing that no one feels our pain more than we do, and no one knows our story more than those who have lived it, us. Let us fight as one man. When the commemoration of our independence, when we commemorate our independence, it is because we too are a country. An accession is criminal. It does not remove our ownership. That's why those who say we don't yet have a country that recognize 1st October as our Independence Day are either confused, dishonest, or anti-revolutionaries. For all of us who acknowledge this day, let us support our LGAs and ARFs because all the celebration of independence is a waste of time if we will do nothing to defend our sovereignty by resisting the occupiers. We will not take back our country by posting on WhatsApp or Facebook, by discussing strategies openly or by insulting one leader or the other. We will not get there by calling ourselves Amazonians or leaders or activists. If you are not willing to fight to take back what belongs to you, the thief will continue to keep and enjoy it. Your celebration of ownership is nothing but a pity party or wasted entertainment. Let us convert every enthusiasm we feel today into contributions to finish the assignment of our lifetime. Let it be said of you and your generation that you did your best to fight for peace through justice in the southern Cameroon and Bazonia. Our freedom should cost every one of us something according to the strength that God has given us individually. Let us make not just our forefathers proud, but give posterity a reason to celebrate our efforts. Viva the free people of the Southern Cameroon and Amazonia. Viva the Federal Republic of Amazonia. And God bless our beautiful country. Thank you.